Okay, so let's talk about, let's look at this folder together. This is an example of folder of uh, some data that we use the Huawei phone to record data. And uh, uh, you are asked to uh, record some data already, right? Yes. I see. And uh, so maybe on your computer, uh, open those files as well. I'll switch a bit later for looking, looking at it together. Okay. So in here, there are two types of data, two types of folders and files. One is the GNSS measurement tools. Uh, this one, it has this uh, GNSS locker. So it, in a way, you can download this app from Google Drive, not from Play Store. You know, for example, but you can also re you can uh, upload these apps from computer to your mobile phone as well. Okay, and let me see. Should I talk? Take a look at something specifically in here. So these are the source file for the app. Uh, Okay, let's not talk about that yet. I, okay. I think in GNSS Locker, if you, uh, uh, once you, uh, once you record the data, you get a file and it's yes. a .txt, .txt yes. file, right? And for those files, we can use the program called the GNSS Analysis Tools for analysis and if i remember last time we talked about the gss analysis tool as well right yeah uh, let me see uh, i think last time i, I demo some of the program as well right uh, let me take a look where is it in here GNSS analysis tools. Sometimes I don't even remember where I put them at the moment. Analysis file. Maybe, ah, this is a GNSS analysis, I think. Yeah. So this is the, I think I showed this last time, right? And here there are some demo files. So these are the text files you obtain from using the Genesis Locker to record. And, uh, and in order to work on this, have you installed these apps already on your computer? You have, right? Okay. Say again. It's a big program, I think. Yeah. It takes some time. Oh, this is installer. Oops, sorry. I installed it already. Okay. I installed it last time, right? And where are the programs? Oh, they are in here. You can run from from, from where? Oh, yeah, from application. Mm -hmm. Here? Yeah. This is right, I think. Ah, I see. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time to. Uh, to upload it, uh, to open it. Ooh, takes a long time. <laughs> Does it take this long on your computers? Yes. Oh yeah, oh, so it's normal. <laughs> because sometimes I remember it's quite quick, you know. Maybe I should have uh, turned it on much uh, further quicker, right? I see. 
So it's based on MATLAB. It's the control chat pa panel, right? Okay. So the step to use this is to first find the log file. Okay. So basically, I'm going to run through like some simple steps first. Then I'm going to go back to uh, some additional X CSV file that, that we get from the that we get the raw data, and then I go to the presentation files from Google's. So here, if I open one of the there's so many uh, how do you say it? There are many uh, many demo files that I recorded when I went. Let me see. This is let's say this is from uh, the file recorded in Laos in Vientiane. So let me see. Maybe I open this file. Okay. Okay. What's the difference in the length? I see, almost the same. Okay, so let me open this one. And uh, so once you locate the file, the log file, and uh, then it opens like this, right? Then you can analyze and plot. Let me see whether we can set or we can check anything. Here it also has a dot, has a tick box for ionoatropo. You can take it out and then compare later if you want, <laughs> you know. So, so in a way, this is maybe more like a similar to RTK lib, but it has a limited feature. It has some in in some way it has limited feature, but in some way it has uh, more features, especially related to bias and all that, right? Okay. So let me see whether I can analyze and plot. So when you analyze, please take a look at the bottom, right? So it says there are uh, 9,881 raw measurements of 1,093 epochs. And this is because we have many satellite and many constellation. Here are some satellite with bad measurements. Okay. And uh, then if you start to get ephemeris files from various from various system, like .n file from this nasac.gov, right? Then, uh, then it extract this. And then, oh, some, sometimes time is wrong. It say automatic, automatic FTP failed. Where can I enter the internet? Let me check, check quickly. Should right. Yeah, okay, let me try again. Yeah, so it reads again and then automatic. Oh, that's weird. It says automatic FTP failed. Let me try another file. Maybe this one. This is from Samsung. Oh, let's try Huawei. Okay. Then analyze and plot. Let's do again. Now it has more data and then it tries to obtain the. Tries to obtain the ephemeris file again. Uh, can you download the ephemeris file? Yes, it shows some results. <laughs> what happens to my? <laughs> <laughs> What does it say here? It is now it's still waiting, right? It's still waiting and waiting. It takes very long time. Or for this part. But at, at least it should show some progress, no? 
so that we are not so oh okay okay finally so uh, but it depends on the amount of data I get you know so yeah this part it takes a while so let's wait for it to fill up to fill up everything it's a MATLAB based So the first field we have, so here we have a lot of, uh, I was, su I'm surprised why didn't, why wasn't I able to uh, click here? Maybe I should change something. This, this file, I think we looked at last time. So the first, the first block that came out was just to read data called C over N zero. It's different from SNR, right? It's the carrier power, divided by N0, N0, which has the unit of watt per hertz. Yes. So it takes out the bandwidth parameters, right? Here, also quick to show because the once you read the data, you just read like elevation angles and you know, all those things, right? Azimuth. But then some other, some other, uh, some other plots will come later from analyzing, uh, one of which is uh, this one. So this is the errors. I think the way they plot is very strange. They plot them here and then they move them all over the place, right? I think that's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't need to worry, you just wait. You put wherever it is. Okay. And left hand side, this one is also the DB hers. This is probably C what C over N zero as well, but they only plot the strongest satellites. Yeah. Out of many satellites, they plot the strongest one. Uh, meaning that they don't for each constellation like GPS, they don't plot all of them, they just plot some of them with the strongest C over N zero. So instead of plotting all seven, they plot only three the three strongest ones. And then for uh, this one is GLONASS also. And then I think they also put color here, meaning that if it's above the threshold, I don't know what threshold this is. If they have the threshold, then uh, then it is green, right? And if it's a bit lower than threshold, it's yellow. If it's uh, very much lower than the threshold, then it's the orange. I think that's the way they do it. And for here, there are four sets of constellation that plots. In your case, how many constellation do you have? Do you have Paypal as well? Yes, GPS, Galileo, oh. and GPS. Ah, I see. Yeah, I remember, I don't know why, but I remember when I was measuring this last, a number of years ago, uh, Paypal didn't come up. And then for this one, we can uh, say, take a look at this. And uh, so you see that they have like the oh so many colors, but I think the blue one generally mean GPS, and then orange one they are the E is probably uh, Galileo I think, yeah. R is probably Russia. R is probably Kelowna, you know. Sometimes the name symbol. The letter they use, you know, signify like Russia, Europe, <laughs> instead of Galileo, Glonas, so and so on. So, well, these are just all of them, right? And you can, if you would uh, reduce it, then you can see something. And then this is interesting. Okay, we didn't talk about this much last time. This one is pseudo range versus time. So what we have here is the pseudo range of each satellite, right? So you see that in general, in this case, sometimes uh, as time goes on, but this is not a lot of time. It's only uh, 1,200 seconds, which is how many minutes? How many minutes? 60 minutes. 1,200 seconds, how many minutes? What do you divide this with? You divide it by 60. 
So it's about 20 minutes. Yeah, it's about 20 minutes. So the pseudo range, they don't change so much, right? Because it's a short time. But in general, we see that sometimes as time goes on, you have higher pseudo range, maybe because it's getting lower elevation slightly, you know. Sometimes you get lower value. It means that uh, it's, has, it's having higher elevation angle within 20 minutes and so on. Okay. So this is one of them. And then normally to the range is about this number. It's like uh, 20 million meters. But if you divide in two kilometers, what do you get? From meter to kilometers, what do you divide? 1,000. So what do you get? About 20,000, right? 23,000, 22,000, 21,000 kilometers, okay? And, oh, my phone? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you look at the next one, okay, let's look at this together. This may be interesting. So then we have this plot. This one is interest is actually important. It's called raw pseudo range errors. Oh, okay, okay. It's fine. Maybe we can wait a little bit. No problem. There may be some phone call for me today as well. So let's uh, pause a little bit. Okay.
Okay, so here the unit is meter and they plot raw pseudo range error together with the one sigma clock, one sigma error in the clock estimate, clock bias estimate. Clock bias is a clock offset, same thing, it's the same name. No? And then here, this is pseudo range rate error, which is the change in the pseudo range. It's like the slope of the pseudo range, how fast it moves. Yes. So here you can also compute a pseudo range rate errors and it's uh, computed from the mature pseudo range rate minus expected pseudo range rate whatever you get here the unit is meter per second and you see that uh, the number is like between minus one minus two and two in this case and at the bottom so here they compute what is called the uh, one sigma error in the clock frequency estimate. And also here is in meter per second. It also varies. Uh, next one is this one. Oh, let's look at this one first. This one, this one we saw already, you know, it's just like the east north up estimate of the position, right? And uh, so in general, you know, it seems to uh, stay around here until I, I went there and I took it off, something like that. So it's like the last few seconds that I was in, I was near the phone and I was trying to move around and all that. So, so take out this part, <laughs> don't worry about, about it too much. So, so, it, so it, it gives you like uh, this type of uh, estimate. And uh, this is up, this is north, north, this is east. So here they plot the horizontal error of 14 meters. And, and let me see. Uh, what's this one? This one is 50. Uh, it's actually very high, very interesting. Uh, this is 50% error is 14 meters or 95% error is 300 meters. Does it make sense? Yes. yes. Oh, so 95% error is, off, is always higher, right? Higher. Oh, but 300 meter is a lot, is a lot, is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So so we can use this to compare between different four as well. You know? And in your case, maybe I ask you a bit later, because you use different four, right? Yes. For a comparison. And then for vertical as well, for vertical uh, for fifty percent uh, errors is about fourteen meters. I don't know why the horizontal error is this high, but anyway. Uh, for 95% error, this is the 600 meter. That's bad. Ah, maybe because it includes this part. That's why. Yeah, if I take out this part, maybe uh, for the 95% error, it's not so bad. Yeah, I think I, I need to recompute this. It's my fault. Okay. So when I look at this number, I just don't believe numbers. But I try to, to understand and make reasoning why it is so. Does it make sense? You don't just believe number you see, right? You need to attach reasoning first. If you can explain it, then you can believe it. If you cannot explain it, you know, don't believe number. Don't just say you plot and you get this. And what else they have here? This one is the clock bias. It's the, it's the clock bias value that it computes. So as time goes on, the clock bias becomes lower and then it becomes larger. So uh, I, I don't know much about this actually. And yeah, up down here is a clock bias. It's computed using only some satellite, which include these three, four, five, six, six satellites for the clock bias. There must be some algorithm in there to compute. Yeah. 
So I think they used only the ones with the strong CO and zero, strong signal quality, I think, right? 10, 20, 31, I think they are the one, right? 10, 20, 31, yeah. So they only use the one with the good uh, CO over N0 for computing this clock bias. And here, this is the frequency drift, which is differentiation of this, derivative of this. So this is the drift. So you see that uh, as time goes on, there's some frequency drift anyway. So that has to be taken care of. But uh, if the drift is linear, then the, it is expected. So this is 0 0.01 parts per billion per second. Okay, so very small. Every 10 million hertz, it it uh, drifts by 0 0.01 hertz. So very 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 small. So there are different numbers you can play around with this here. Okay, so next let me go to. Uh, another file which is like the raw data okay so this is the example of raw data that uh, should i look at this okay this is in excel uh, in genesis locker you get the text file right but you can also uh, plot with the RNX. I think RNX is probably uh, RINEX, if I'm right. Yes, it's RINEX, right? So these are also uh, stored as well for, you know, RINEX format already, right? Yeah. I don't need to say it again. But I think in this case, the, it's recorded near almost the, not the same time, but uh, so one is for Maybe this is for GPS, this is for Galileo, for Beto, for uh, J is the Japanese, QZSS, right? R is the Russia. Yeah, so you need to switch back and forth about these letters once in a while, right? So, uh, and then when you come, when you store the file from Genesis Locker, you can also have this .kml, KML, is for opening in Google Map. Yes. And so if you can open Google Map and you can open this KML file, so it's like a map format, right? And then you can have the, uh, you can have the NMEA. NMEA is another format, but only gives you the positioning. It's not the raw data. So if you open this file, so what you get is something like this yes so see it has like all these like uh, uh you know which satellite do you see i guess and which uh, uh which quality do you see something like that uh, if you look at uh, uh, G so each field gives you different information right if you have like the this one, I think, GGA, this one, they give you, uh, and this is probably the time, and then, I don't know, this is probably the uh, uh, latitude, longitude, right? But I think you need to put additional, uh, you have to divide by 10, I think, which is about 13 degrees north, and then 101 degrees east, right? And then and so on. So so they give different of this the information. Also, I think, what is it? There's also this one. So GSV is the satellite uh, numbers, right? How about how about, uh, how about RMC? This is also the positioning as well, right? Oh, right the same thing but i don't know the difference and here do they have something else beside gps i think it's here it's only set as gps only that's why you have the gp right yeah anyone so they you see that uh, information of the satellite numbers 
and then the you know the positioning you know they switch like regularly right so in here they compute the positioning for you already this is NMEA and they're used in many equipment so that you don't need to it outputs the positioning you know from the beginning yes so here you can look on the slide that we talked before okay next one uh, okay this is the, the raw data I think I want what is this this is Microsoft Access maybe this one is used by is is saved by the student separately let me see if they, they have the Microsoft Access file on other dates no okay so that's like a saved by himself okay then raw data so raw data is read out from the this uh, text file so if we open this text file what do we get let's take a look together so for this text file this is what we get uh, we have all these uh, like you know all the parameters okay so uh, first it says raw mm, i don't know why it says raw <laughs> because it's raw data anyway right <laughs> then it says elapsed real time millisecond what is this okay so it's the real time millisecond right how about the next one this is time nanos what is this You remember? Mm -hmm. Because you have to convert this time to uh, when you plot. Otherwise, you don't know the time. So if you compute this, this is 5766168819, right? But it's in millisecond. So in second is, is this number. This is in second. Yes. yes. How many years is that? Can you compute? Five, seven, six, six, one, six. Maybe you can use some website that we looked at before to compute the the time today from nineteen eighties. <laughs> can you can you check? Mm -hmm. This is five seven six six one six, right? So let me go to maybe on the uh, on this website and take a look for fun. Okay, I think I remember we used to compute this uh, GPS time, right? Yes. Or GPS week uh, calculator, right? And at that time, I think we used this one from U from UK, but there are also other websites as well. Okay. Don't, don't be surprised why I try to speak very nice today because I try to record it as well. <laughs> okay, so, so we can put UTC time here, right? I think in this file uh, that I showed earlier, they, uh, they recorded it back in uh, 5 7 2020. So let me put this date, 5 7 2020. I don't know, this is this is the month, this is the date, I think. So it's the 7 May 2020. Okay. So let me put 7 May. Twenty twenty, right? And uh, what was the time? The time is about 6 p.m. Let me put 6 p.m. Just uh, let me put 6 p.m. No, just for uh, 6. Wait, wait. 6 p.m. is 18. <laughs> Was it 6:50? Six fifty? The one after essentially is the time. 18:40. Ah, yes, yes. So, okay, so 18, 14, 42, right? 
So let me put it, uh, 18, 14, 42. Okay. Yeah, maybe it took that long to record. So it, it uh, saved later. Okay. So here we can compute, convert to this time. Okay. So what do we have? So the second of day, I think it's the second of that day. Right, is it? I don't know. Let me, let me take a look. 56 something. Shall we compare with what we have earlier? Maybe we can map the numbers. So what is this? 11 laps real time millisecond so uh, 570 did i put anything wrong here 7 may 2020 Oh, so what is this number? Can you check? Yeah. Five seven six six one six. Let's let's take a look at that file. We have that file, right? Right. This is the file. So this is the formula, right? They say the uh, GPS time is time is time nanos, and then minus this field, right? So here we have a time, so we have to convert to GPS time first, but this is time nanos. But I think this one is also can be used, but let's take a look anyway. So they have this time nanos, which is this value, right? And then you have to minus full bias plus bias nanos. So this, this two, right, which is which field? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Uh, wait, wait, one, two, three, four, five. Wait, wait, one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Yeah. So these are the. These are the. What is it? Full. Full bias nanos and my, my and bias nanos. Okay, this one is small. Okay, so that's what it says. You use time nanos, and then and then you subtract with uh, subtract 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 becomes plus. You no. Know? So in a way, you put this and then add the full bias nanos. Yeah. But there are some other value as well. But then let me see. Does it say anything about the elapse? The elapse, uh, elapse real time millisecond. I think that can be used. Uh, does it say anything here? Why do I think that uh, this this numbers, which is the Five seven six six one six must be related to what we saw here somehow. Yeah. 
Is this real? Elapse real? In in the manual, does it say anything about this view? Elapse real time milis. Again. Is the is the Dyson six uh, the the system is two I mean the system is what is the system uh I mean I think uh is the six the the whole is uh, the whole is power. I'm sorry? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think is the time uh, from um, from the four is power on. From the phone is powered on. Yeah, it, uh, yeah. in the game, and like, it, yeah, it's this way, like, uh, it's, but then it's the time since the system was put into this. I think it's, uh, it's the time from the phone is power on. Phone of Windows is turn on. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, but then that is the, how many, so, how many, I mean, if you divide this, 576, 616 seconds, what do you get? How many hours? I think it's, it's a long time. <laughs> it's not a short time, you know? It's in nanosecond. Yeah, because this is already, see, second of week is already. Uh, Can, can you compute this number, how many weeks or how many days? Because it's millisecond, so this is second, right? So it's about six days, almost seven days, right? And what day is this? The seven May twenty twenty. I think it's like second of week, second in that week. I think seven May twenty twenty. Here. Yeah. The first day start here, right? Yes. This is seven May. So how many minutes? How many how many days are here? One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. It's only five days. Yeah. I think uh, the definitely we so meaning that we don't use this? Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. Because this file is also used to uh, is also used to uh, it is it's used for general public need our timing. I see. So for this if you want to use you will need to use this GPS time, right? Or, or if it's not used for positioning purpose, but it's used for like a, some plot, maybe you can sort of use system time and then just count how many seconds. That's also possible, right? But if you need precise time, you need to play with this. Okay. But then does it also have something else? Oh, I see. It can also give something else like fixed provider, latitude, longitude, altitude. So raw data means it's raw data. But for raw data, what else does it give? Yeah, but does it give pseudo range value? So it gives you CON zero as well. It gives you pseudo range rate. Does it give pseudo range? I don't see it. Maybe it's in the back. 
Anyway, so we can uh, write a program to read these values, okay? Or you can, maybe you can open these in Excel. I don't know, in Excel you can open, right? This type of text file. Yeah, I think it's possible as well. Maybe you should try. And what else does it give you? It also gives you AGC, automatic gain control in decibel, right? It gives you uh, multi-path indicators. But where is the pseudo range? <laughs> Some, you get pseudo range red, but you don't get pseudo range. That's strange. Okay, maybe I'll look at your file a bit later and then, see, and then we can compare what we get, you know. But in any case, for this file, uh, after reading it into uh, an Excel or .csv file, this is what we have. Okay. I think you can you can open that text file using Excel. You should try. Okay. I give you as one uh, assignment as well. Okay. So here basically you just uh, uh, put in all those values in each uh, item, right? And notice that these two fields there were no value. So if you remember in that file, it has comma, comma, comma. Yes, and then so this full bias and so on, they are here. Okay, so so in this case, because the student was trying to use this file for uh, detecting the signal quality during jamming and non jamming uh, purpose, so I think what he did use mostly was in that case, I think the time was not the main issue because the, as long as you know, rough time is okay. But then, uh, but then for each, um, uh, this is one thing I need to talk to him about. So it means that for every line here, so here is millisecond, right? Yes. And how many lines are there? Yeah. So if you take a look, if you take out these three, the last three values, which is 819, right? So these are the seconds. So we can go to the bottom of the file and see how many seconds have passed since 16, right? 16 or 616, I don't know, 576, 616. Oh, let me copy this so I can put at the bottom and then compare. So this at the bottom, this is what we have red color just for checking so okay so if we subtract a one five one one five one oh eight with a one five one oh nine right this is what we have so it's changed by 316 seconds which is about how many minutes, G? Kidney hua. You have brain. 516 seconds. How many, uh, roughly, how many seconds? How many minutes? Three hundred month divided by sixty. About five about five minutes. Yeah. So you should practice this. When you never whenever you compute something simple, you compute in your head. Don't use calculator. For some things long, it's okay. Otherwise, your brain is not developed, and you'll be slow. But if you you know compute everything in your head, especially small numbers like that, it makes you it makes you sharper. It's a good exercise. Even old people they practice this these days, because if they stop using brain, your brain will not get uh, so sharp. It will be slow. Okay, so about five seconds. Basically, yeah, about five seconds of data, but it's a lot of data because it's, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, five minutes, five minutes, yeah, so five minutes, okay. So, okay, so it looks like we don't need to use these. Uh -huh. Maybe you, yeah, we don't need to use this number, but we can, for, for positioning purpose, maybe we need to, uh, to compute the, the exact timing, the GPS time by computing time nanos, full bias nanos, and bias nanos. 
and then whatever you get SGPS time, then if they have inter-system bias, I don't know. I think there's another formula of inter-system bias, right? If you don't have it, you don't need to use it. <laughs> and then from TPS time, then we can, now we can go back and compare with the, where the satellite numbers in the dot .me file. Yes, okay. So you should try to compute the GPS time here in Excel file. Please write down. Okay. okay, so I finish here. So in this work, you know, because the student were was working on plotting the quality of COAN0 and also the, the AGC, okay. So uh, I don't know, does it also give you different satellite numbers? No, I don't think it gives here. So he has to uh, correlate these values with the another .n file to see which satellite belongs to which. Yes. If it's in already in this file, that's good. If it's not, then it takes more efforts. Okay. But here is only GPS only, I think. It's not multi-constellation. So it means that uh, uh, for each time, you know, there are different. Oh, oh yeah. this is it. Oh, already satellite ID. Simple. Actually, it's multi constellation because it has 193, 194, 195, but most of them are GPS. Yes. So already, you know, he can uh, plot CON0 of different satellite. Okay, maybe you can try playing this file. And then go and plot zero and zero different satellite on different curves. Okay. Another one that he uses is the AGC. Uh, AGC decibel is a is is a circuit in your phone. Whenever you receive signal is very low, AGC tries to increase it so that your signal is stronger. It's called automatic gain control. Or if your signals that come in is like this, AGCs try to smooth it. Yes, yeah, so that's the job. Okay, so let me stop here and then I go to PowerPoint, okay? Now you go to the fun part as well. So so please plot this uh, CON0 and AGC for a different satellite on different curves okay so one plot is zero and zero one plot is agc okay and because you know the satellite numbers already okay okay now let me go to the file that uh, i need to look to share with you first before we go further okay so this is the uh, okay thanks to uh, uh dr frank deacon from Google, and uh, this is his presentation made in 2018. I think they probably had uh, um, an updated version as well, but let's look at this one first, okay? So this presentation, the goal was trying to talk about what you can utilize the raw measurements from the Android phones for different purposes, okay? So, uh, I'm not going to go through all slides. You can take a look at it. Okay. So uh, at the at the back of the slides, I think they have different study cases of utilizing utilizing the raw data in the phone. Okay. So so I think it's quite interesting. You know, when the presentation is started with this, like. Uh, uh, what happens if you have one meter accuracy in your phone? What what can you do? What is the what is I mean how is it how can it be used? Okay, if you have one meter or less accuracy, okay, right. One one way you can do is you can tell the you can do the level vehicle navigation, meaning that uh, you can tell whether the car is in the lane or not you can see whether the car changed lane quickly, you know, so that's important. Another way is you, 
maybe you can even tell on which side of the road you are. You know, on the road you can be on the right hand side, on the left hand side, on the footpath. So this will be, or even driving and all that, it will be much more, more accurate, right? If you have like 10 meter accuracy, you cannot do such thing. For example, uh, on the road, you know, each lane, you know, you know the width of each lane in general? Uh, yeah, it depends in the country. In Thailand, maybe two meters. <laughs> but in, some, in most countries, they have three meters. So it's quite long because it has to accommodate trucks. In Thailand, when you have trucks, it already occupies one and a half lane, you know, <laughs> because <laughs> the lane is so small and, you know, troublesome, right? So let me see. Uh, so in order to have this centimeter accuracy in general, uh, one of the technique that is used is called uh, like a, this type of differential GPS, PPP or RTPA, right? We'll talk about PPP and RTPA during, during next lecture in detail, right? And uh, so this is just a review that we mentioned already and talked already in the class that uh, there are two ways to make sure that, uh, that the GPS signals can be utilized. One way is the code pseudo range the other way is the carrier phase to the range, right? And uh, for the course to the range, is much each 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 code chip is much larger than the twenty centimeter of the period or lambda of the carrier phase. Therefore, in general, in order to utilize the one the meter scale or centimeter scale accuracy, you need to utilize the carrier phase. Okay, because the core chip is large, so it cannot give you low resolution. But the carrier phase is small, so they can give you the smaller resolution, the better resolution, right? And uh, uh, for most smartphones nowadays, they contain only one frequency, which is the L1 frequency. Okay? And, uh, but then many GNSS system, they support uh, additional frequencies such as L5, which is the new frequency. But maybe for Peito or Galileo, maybe they call E5 or B5 or something like that. I don't know, maybe B2, I think. Yeah, they use different names. Is, is the frequency, is the, so when we say the L5 and L1, in a way it means the frequency. And in many new systems, they also try to support lower frequency of L5 in order so that, and also I think they, they increase the power as well so that, you know, from satellite to your receiver is stronger. So higher power and, and also because it's, it's, it at, it's at lower frequency, so it can penetrate uh, stronger. Yeah. It can penetrate. It can pose further, it can penetrate obstruction better, you know, and so on. So, anyway, so let's see. And these are just sample of application and so on. So the, what the measurement tools by Google, you know, they, we talked a, bit, a, a little bit earlier and we play with it already. Basically, in this slide, they talk about raw measurements, locking analysis tools which we talked already, what's new in 2018, some exercises and some future apps and research. Yeah. So I think we talked about this already is uh, in Android, you know, the location APIs will support all these uh, values. We also have the measurement and sensor API in Android locations that gives you location, genus measurement, genus clock. So in general, this is what we use, okay. And for the GNSS raw measurements, so uh, it comes in the GNSS chip after 2016, and the OS has to be after the new card, Android N, okay. And uh, so this is the stack of the, how do you call it, like the layer, okay, the API sensor, down here is in like this is down here 
but this is application you know you can use for uh, how do you call it for uh, uh, application you can use it to like mapping like different places you can use for locating whether you're within boundary like geofencing if you go out the go out of the area maybe you you have to pay <laughs> something like that like in the new expressway in thailand we are starting to use geofencing uh, i don't know whether it's called geofencing but basically if you are outside certain area or within certain area you start to pay automatically yeah but geofencing i think they can also use for like a prisoners you know you remember that these days some of the people who are not allowed to get out of their house for 100 meters 200 meters they have to wear this type of handcuff and whenever you get out you know if you are outside the area this is called dual fencing in a way so fencing with the gps coordinates it's not a real fence you know yeah and then all that fuse location divider i don't know what this is yeah activity recognition it can tell you whether you're running you are walking or you are uh, doing what you know and so on and there are some other some other applications we saw this already these are different phones that can provide some uh, values such as automatic gain control navigation data and uh, data mess data range uh, okay, and so on okay and these are all android so if you want if you look at like huawei and you know if you look at uh apples and all that we are in a different uh interest <laughs> okay these are the two i go quickly you no know, because we talked about it already you know? and so locking data you know how to do it already you just uh, plot uh, check on measurements start locking it keeps locking you can select different you can select navigation message you can select enemy a if you want okay and uh, then when it's done you stop and you can save it in uh, you can send it through gmail you can send it through bluetooth you can send it to google drive uh, this one i haven't tried maybe you should try android beam i think this is the, just uh, to be in between phone maybe right um, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. so, and when you uh, log data, it's, it uh, store automatically on this folder called GNSS log. If you use other software like, uh, uh, what is it, Rio, right? Plus. Yeah, or Geo++ Plus Plus and all that, is, they are also in their own folders, okay? And, and they will put in, in the order of the time of years and all that as well. But normally I try to save it with location so I know where I record them. I don't get confused too much. <laughs> yeah. And uh, here they said that uh, uh, back then they started this uh, new feature called UT cycling control. And I don't know what this is analysis on phone, right? So, uh, so this thing we saw already, so it has L5 capability, mission planning, uh, mission, then COAN zero error analysis of moving receiver, smooth and raw sort of range and all that. And then it has the tick for Iono and Tropo that we saw earlier. So let's see what they are. This one is actually interesting, but I haven't tried it. This is for the de developer option. So basically for the developer option, they have the duty cycling control. So what happens is, it, especially for carrier fares, uh, in general, you know, in order to save battery, they don't receive signals. They don't receive these carrier fares or continuously. They receive on and off, on and off, in order to save battery. This is called duty cycling control. So if you disable this, then you can record the the carrier fares automatically all the time. Meaning that if you want to use mobile phone to receive raw data for TEC comp measurements, TEC computing, then you need to force this to have full GNSS measurements. Okay. So you can take a look on how, how to go into developer option and how to use it. Okay. So maybe help me take a look. 
on how to use this developer option as well. And these are just uh, now they you can they plot on the screen as well, so you can see it, you know the log and all that. Okay, meaning that these these can be seen not just in the GNSS analysis tool software on your computer, you can see on the phone as well. Yes, and they have L one, L five, and so on. And these are all the values and blah blah. blah. Okay, mission planning. Uh, what is this? I haven't seen this. So mission planning is the. What is it? You can see the sky plot, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's what it's for. No? What What else can it be? I don't know. So it's a sky plot. Yeah. And then here we saw already, no? Right? Uh -huh. I go quickly, no, because we saw already. This part I haven't tried yet. They say that you can uh, have the measurement errors for moving receiver. Yeah, meaning that uh, if you if you have the, I guess what you let me see. I don't know what to use this for, but basically you have to attach this .nmea file and it will compute measurement error for you. Maybe it's the, maybe, maybe mm, I don't know, maybe, I think maybe this is what it is, is the, uh, you can move your, your receiver, right? And then you record, use Genesis Locker, but you also record in an MEA, and then you do, and then you do analysis later. And this is what I think. Let's see what they have. So this, oh, oh, that's what they say, that's all. But I think they have like some exercise at the back. Maybe we can take a look together. These we saw already, you know. So these are just the, the smooth pseudo range error, pseudo range error, and so on. These are log file, and uh, oh, they can write data to file. Oops, you don't need to. <laughs> so try it. <laughs> so try that. <laughs> I see that. That's what it is. Yep. And uh, so these are all values. You can take a look in your file. Okay, I think they just uh, because it's too long, so they they cut some part of it and put here. I think. Yeah. I don't know tropo control. You can put it and then compare. And then last part is just the hand-on exercise of various studies that you can do with this data. So exercise number one, uh, I, I think we saw this already, right? So I don't go through it too much. Basically, they just want to show you how to read each file and then what each thing is, right? And uh, let me see, the second one, second one, yeah, this is like a driving exercise. And uh, so you analyze this uh, .txt file and also .nmea file as well. And then they try to plot in here yeah, during that trip of writing. Maybe you should try next time I drive. No. And I plot for fun. So I think what they try to plot here is, uh, let me see. They try to compute the raw pseudo range error during the during the moving, and see maybe which satellite has more errors, or you know the thing is if we try to record it outdoor, let's say on the roof, we get good solution everywhere, right? But in this case, I think what they do is they try to uh, uh, measure use Genesis Locker while the car or you are moving. Yes, yes. And then you can al analyze at different environment where you pass, okay? So here they say that, oh, you know, suddenly there are some sort of range error 50 meters of some satellites. So what's happening? So if you compare that G22 on the left-hand side, you know, with the sky plot that you saw, you find that, oh, at that time, 
uh, it has very low elevation angle so maybe it's blocked from this from the from the uh, obstruction or the buildings right yeah and then on the left hand side also they found that you know for this g22 at certain time it's very bad so i, I think that's <laughs> that's what it is just to check the quality and so on no? this you can play you can walk around and you know, measure and try to go through some like between buildings, and then from there you can analyze something that's wrong. So do that as homework for fun. Okay. <laughs> okay. Next one. Uh, this one is Iono and Tropo demo. Okay. So uh, let me see what I'm trying to do. Okay. So they say that here, what you need is you need a because. Here they want to uh, compute the Iono and Tropo delay. So what they need to do is they need to know the true position at the place where you are measuring. Yes. So you need to have a reference PVT. Yeah. But but in but previously what we do is in order to get this value, you need to put your dual frequency receiver like a reference station right there. Okay, for example, uh, downstairs we have a GSS receiver, right? Yes. And then we connect to antenna. Do we have a hardware lab down there yet? Yes. Where is it? I don't see it. Uh, GSS receiver? Yeah, not yes. yet, right? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Is uh, GSS uh, receiver or antenna? Yeah. But I asked nice to connect them and make them like station for study. Yes, I'm doing the T3s and we want me to do that as an exercise. No, no, but I want to have a separate area. Oh, I see. Yeah. Can, in, in our, where you see it, how many desks are there? A few desks. Are there any empty desks? No. But it's too small. It I can hold it for my desk. No, but it's not only for you, it's for everyone. Maybe for undergraduate students as well. It's not just for you. Oh, I see. So I think we should move one person from Pim or Kit to sit next to you. Who sit next to you? Uh, Bas. Bas and. And Pim. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. We can move it on the hardware corner. We can set it on. The yeah, and say that is the hardware station, yes. and don't let anyone sit there. Oh, I see. Okay. So let's do that. Okay. Okay, do that. Then put two two receiver, not just one. So we can play with two models. We have we have two or three spare receivers. But initially I want the area to be to be where nobody sits so that we don't disturb anyone. I think it's better, yeah. Yeah, I think I want to do it where Kit and Pim is sitting. Yeah, sometimes we sit on that. It's like a location. Okay, okay, okay. Then I'll come back to that later. So this one, because they want to test IONO delay or TOPO delay, I think that add it together. Then, then you need to know the true position. Yes. So you can test with, with your mobile phone, but you test near the antenna upstairs. Because that antenna upstairs, you connect to the dual frequency receiver in our lab, right? Yeah. Then you can use that one day of data or half a day of data on the PPP website. Yes, please ask nice and, 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 and all that about it. But uh, I think for PPP website, you can access in this web. If we go to our lab website, which is this is one, okay? I think I have a link for you. It's also in the lectures here. I think there's a link for PPP in here. Not in here. 
uh, let me see. Maybe I can take a look in this work. In our lectures, did I talk about this PPP or oh, not here? The next lecture, but let, let me pull it up anyway. So, but this will be talked about next week. Man, I am so delayed this semester. But okay. okay. So, in order to get the PPP, you can go to this web. Yeah. Yeah, it's a post processing uh, website for PPP. You can use some of these. For example, this one you can use. So let me copy this link. Okay. This is in, uh, this slide I sent you already, no? A few weeks ago. So you can go to these links. Okay. And all you need is to, uh, you need to just submit this. To, uh, Uh, but maybe you have to uh, to apply first. Where's the website? Is it now? Let's see. Okay, let me try another one. Maybe another web will be easier to see. This one is from Australia. Must post. This can be used as well. I think for Canadian one, you have to apply for membership first. Okay, this is OSPOS online TBS processing service. Okay, so that's that's what you need to do. Just submit the data, like the Rhinex file, and then email, then it will send you the PPP <laughs> reference coordinate afterward. Yes. You can try with that for fun. If you want to know, like in your case, you can use the Rhinex data from connected to the antenna at the top of, of building, yes. and then you can compute the reference values, reference position. Or you can use the one day Rhinex data from the station at the at the rooftop yes. and then input in there as well. Yeah. But then when you do this experiment, you then you have to go to the rooftop there. Yeah, we'll go tomorrow with the detail everyone. That we have a meeting at the rooftop tomorrow. Yeah, it's fine that's fine uh -huh. the whole day so uh, so you can talk about your work today or oh, today i have i'm very busy so when can you talk friday yes okay well, let's uh, have um scheduling a bit later but you should have told me you just you just knew it yes you should have you should have told me earlier so i arranged the switching because I, I don't like to work last minute. I always work one week ahead, two weeks ahead. Always, yeah. Let me, let me tell everyone about meeting tomorrow.
Okay, so so that's that. Okay, let me go back to that slide a bit more. So we're almost noon already. Shit. So here you need to know the true position where you want to do testing. Okay, because this for this experiment, the goal is not to uh, estimate your position, but the goal is to use what is known at your location, your position, and estimate the IONO delay or tropical delay. So it's a different uh, type of work. And here they also select the highest satellite to use for clock bias computation, I guess because it's more reliable. Okay. And then remove ion and tropo model from analysis. Anyway, so this is what they get. Also, here I haven't tried. They say that you can get true position from Google Earth this way. Here you can go to references, references, you can select these values. Yeah, and do all these. And so if you're at, ah, here you maybe you don't need like a reference station, but maybe you can try to, to get your position from the phone, from the, or from the Google Earth software, right? Here they say that, if you are here and you point, you, you're testing at this point with your phone, with this latitude, longitude, elevation like that, okay? But this is not the true elevation because the, you know, it's never true elevation, okay? So what they do is they uh, use this elevation, this height, height of, uh, 20 meters, they call this HG, height above G point, and then they add with the height of stand here, one meter, the phone is on top of the chair, and then minus the geoid. This depends on area in, on the world. Yeah, so here they minus 32, so they get the value of he equals to minus 11 meters so the true position is minus 11 meters it's quite small anyway. and then and then uh, I, uh, this one i think is about this clock bias thing that uh, they look at the area and they find that the satellite number the highest is 32 so they go into the code and then select 32 here. Okay. So this can be placed inside in the same directory as your log file. Okay. I guess when they try to uh, to compute the clock bias, it will read from this custom parameter text. So here is how they do analyze errors of IONO and TROPO. So here they put stationary, they put the reference station to be at latitude, longitude, and also the altitude earlier. And then from here, put menu. And then, uh, so this is the clock frequency drift from satellite number G32. If you remember when I showed you earlier, it's computed from many satellites, right? Yes. And then, uh, then here is the smooth. Uh, also earlier, they didn't check the IONO or the ID of Tropo, and they look at the smooth P, P pseudo range error of different satellite. Okay. So, uh, so what is this thing? Let me see, what's the goal of this? Uh, I think what you can do is to, you can click, you can, you can uh, take out IONO and TROPO and then you can plot this to plot and see what you get. And then you can, uh, but this, is pseudo range error is in meters, right? Uh, I see. 
And I guess you can click later, you can do another experiment and then click IONO and then click TOPO. And then from there, you can see the edit or the change in this smooth pseudo range errors. And that is the IONO delay. Yeah. So it's interesting exercise to try, no? Yeah. Anyway, and then they said that in the future, there's another example. This one we did already. One of the graduate students did it. Yeah. Jamming detection, carrier phase PVT, Genesis system monitor, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. So they are, ah, already they do it. This jamming detection. So you can, they can, you can plot. This one of the homework problem I asked you to do, no? Just to plot the AGC values in decibel. Okay. Whenever it becomes very low, it becomes low because there are jamming signals come in. So it becomes, it looks like more signals come into our phone. So AGC is reduced, tries to reduce the value. So that is not too high. But in this experiment, they use microwave. Interesting. I don't know whether it's inside microwave or outside. Is it inside? Uh, I don't think so. No, 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 it should be outside, not inside. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's inside, it should be outside. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe in, right next to the microphone. Yeah. Oh, next to the phone. Yeah. And then they talk about some other work you can do with carrier phase, accumulative delta mm -hmm. range. This is what you do to compute the carrier phase. And uh, maybe also we can try to have like a lower one meter accuracy for the mobile phone and so on. I don't know. There are a lot of things to read, so you can play with it. Uh -huh. So this is, I think this is related to what we saw earlier. I don't know, tropo, you know, multipath, and so on, for different cases, yeah. So it's quite fun, actually, to merge what we learn and use the mobile phone, OK? So let me maybe. Uh, switch the recording now and then i will take a look at your uh, your your file that you recorded okay and then see maybe we can 